I'm sitting in a cafeteria and she, I just hear somebody like, Aisha. She was like, I'm Jamila Davis. I'm the one that sent you the book. Literally from that day, we were inseparable. Let's give it up for Aisha Laho. They were listening to our phone calls, seeing us like kind of conspire how we were gonna come home and take over the world. And they started hating. I started learning more about trading. And then I just got really, really deep into it. And next thing you know, we doing a million a month. We try to get a loan against this fake document. So they froze my bank account and the feds got involved and went to federal prison. People of color, especially women, get charged for white collar crimes. So not only do you get punished for the crime, you get punished for daring to be a black woman. Right. I was traumatized in prison, you know? I, I, I was traumatized, you know? I lost my father, I lost my brother. So it, it was a lot. I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Now that I know I deserve more, I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Made up my mind, I'm on my grind, my time to shine, you hit my line, I press decline, no time for that, I'm moving forward and right now, you're in my past, I've come too far, to turn back now, not going back, I see that everybody's sleeping on me, they really gotta see it, to believe. Welcome back, this is your girl Dr. Jamila T. Davis. And Tara Wallace. And this is I Love Me More. Period. <laughs> the end. Yes. So y'all already know y'all been following us, watching us. Or if this is your first time, this is the house of transition, right? Yes. The place where the healing goes down. If you don't know about us, you know that we keep it 100% real. And we talk about real life things pertaining to self-care, mm -hmm. right? And how to break free from toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. So our podcast is all about healing, transformation, figuring it out, really talking to your sisters about what matters most, and that's you, sis. And also offering you tools to make sure you're following. If you're ready to take that journey, if you're ready to look at yourself, start working on yourself, we have the available tools to help guide you through this process. That's right, because oftentimes, we take the steps and we think we know what we're doing, mm -hmm. but we don't really know what we're doing, right? So we have a community, y'all, right? Where black women link up, you know? And in that community, we have therapists, right? We have healers, mm -hmm. we have each other, and it's a place, a safe place to just share and just mm -hmm. to learn because we're not giving a manual on the book of life. No. Yeah, we can learn from our sisters. I know, Tom, as you share things with me and just, you know, I share things with you, we just become better people just through the Right. Shit. Or just we think of stuff that the other hadn't thought of because it's fr from an eye that's not inside of the situation. And um, accountability partners, right? That's right. Because that's another, another thing. Support your, your, your group of supporters to support what's happening with you. Because we start things, mm -hmm. right? And then we don't finish. So yeah. you got your accountability partners. It's all going down at blackwomenslivesbatted.com. So even after, right, you are able to join our community. And then you're also able to get our book. And our book isn't a regular book, guys. It's an interactive tool. So often times people will write a book and they'll share, share, share. But then you don't do the work. Mm -hmm. I learned through my journey that I had to go back. I had to pinpoint the places where the toxicity started so I could really, really, really look at it clearly to dethrone it. So that's what the book does. It's actually a workbook journal where you're actually able to pinpoint and do the growth work and heal and transition, you know, and make yourself stronger, wiser, and better by doing the work. Absolutely. And also knowing that you're not the only one. I think creating this platform is about making women feel comfortable you know, sharing their stories, really working on themselves. And you can do that when you realize that it's so many women going through it. We all have this this rocky patch, things that we need to get over, toxic things we've brought in from that we've that we bring into adulthood from childhood. And the moment you create a space where people are talking about that, you realize it's okay. You're not the only one. You don't even have to be ashamed of it. You just need to start the work. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of that, I started to work when I was in prison. Mm -hmm. It was a dark space for me, but it was actually a hospital because it was the place where I began to do my healing work, where I began to look my demons in the face and really deal with 
the low self-esteem and the trauma and the things that actually landed me in such a dark space. And I had the privilege to be around some amazing women who shared similar stories that led them to the same dark place too. You'll notice as we talk in these talks and discussions, the patterns will point them out. Right. You'll see them in your own life. There's common denominators. And then there's ways to break generational curses, right? I'm a spiritual person and I love God so much, but I feel like it's not church alone. You got to do, do the work and tools, right? You need things to actually help you go back, not just with scripture, but with practical, right? right. So this is the practical stuff, the nitty gritty that can really, really, really help you to heal. And baby, I've been through some things, mm -hmm. I've been through some public things mm -hmm. and we share and we keep it real. We're not trying to be cute here, even though we look cute. You know, <laughs> and it happens. But it ain't about that. What it's about is really mm -hmm. bearing our truth so that we can heal. Mm -hmm. Speaking about bearing our truth, and I, I tell you all the time about, you know, I spent close to a decade in prison. And in prison, I met some people. But oh my goodness, when we talk about incarcerated women, I want you to understand that more than 50% of us are there due to some kind of trauma, something in our past that led us there. And then I told you before, they simply warehouse us. They give us lengthy sentences. I myself got a decade plus sentence for bank fraud, right? And they sit you there, warehouse you, and then they don't give you the tools to rehabilitate. So the issue that caused you to go to prison, you never deal with it. But then you meet with more people who have more issues and teach you more things to do more crazy stuff. And it creates this cycle and it's not a cycle of healing. And unfortunately what happens with that, many of us come home, link up with each other and it's more toxicity because we really didn't learn the fundamentals of how to be a good person, how to be a friend, how to, you know, really, you know, really, really live and strive and thrive in life. And it's an unfortunate situation because it causes so much and hurt people begin to hurt people. And it's another vicious cycle of things that go on. So today, y'all, um, we about to get to it. Y'all already know our guests be different. We ain't got the regular guests up on this show, sugar. We be having some guests, right? Mm -hmm. And our guests have stories, stories of triumph, stories of losses, mm -hmm. stories of wins, setbacks, comebacks, all the things. And this guest today, uh -huh. sister, ooh, 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 you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> this dear sister coming on today, y'all going to be like, what? So this is an episode that you all want to turn on. You all want to watch this one all the way through the end. Okay. You all want to subscribe. You all want to like. You all want to share. You want to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. To join the community. Yes, because it's going down. I know that's right. Join the community. We outside, y'all. Yeah, so it's a lot happening, and we're going to keep it real. All right. You ready to get into it? I'm ready to get into it. It's about that time. But before we do that, you know we got to pay these good old bills. So here's a word from our sponsor. Hello, friends. It's your girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and I have a special announcement. We are finally opening up the Black Women's Lives Matter community. So what does that mean in real time? We can fellowship with you. We have this platform that we're giving to you for absolutely free. And it's a place where you can learn from other black women just like you. And we're gonna be learning real things, speaking to experts about finances, relationships, fashion, makeup, parenting, you name it, we got it in the community. It's a place that we can fellowship and also heal. We're also going to be having therapy in the community. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about to get off our chest, you know, and we're going to do it in a safe place where we can learn from experts about how to maximize our potential and become the best us that we can possibly be. So what does this mean? It's time to click the link in our bio and join today it is absolutely free it costs you nothing <laughs> and it will grow you so much i promise you so meet me in the community you get to actually work with me this year i'm gonna be doing some one-on-ones i'm gonna be doing some group work and it's all about leveling up meet me in the community i'll see you soon and y'all already know what it is it's going down Welcome back to I Love Me More, period, podcast. And guys, today 
we are ready to introduce our amazing guest. Yes, so we have on my dear friend who is a author, rapper, right? Television sensation and some more. Let's give it up for Aisha Lahore. Oh, uh, thank you. Hey, hey, girl. Hey, girl. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Very good. So tell us um, a little bit about yourself. So my name is Aisha Hall, and um, I'm from Roosevelt, Long Island. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, as you said, I'm an author. Um, I am an advocate about, you know, prison reform. I do public speaking. Uh, I do it all. Anything that needs to be done, I do it. <laughs> ah, and and can you tell us, Jamela, where you and Aisha met? Well, we met each other at Alderson Federal Prison Camp. And I guess that was back in, what was that back in? 2000, maybe 15, 16? Maybe oh, 15. I it was 17. So I guess that was like 2015. Like 15. 2015, mm-hmm. I met Aisha. Okay. And you guys were, you met her, y'all became friends right away. Because it seems to me, you, you meet these people, they you have an instant like love for them. Because you always talk about that. I met this person with something about them. Is it the same with Aisha? Yeah. So I was coming from Danbury Federal mm-hmm. Prison Camp. And many of y'all may remember, uh, we had Keisha Ellis on, right? right? So from Danbury, I was transferred to Alderson. And I didn't want to go to Alderson because I was trying to get to Bryan, Texas to be with her, okay. right? Mm-hmm. But I ended up at Alderson. And when my friend Shawana knew I was going to Alderson, she was like, yo, you got to meet my friend. Mm-hmm. Yo, she, yeah, she remind me so much of you. You will love her. Her name is Aisha Hall. So I went there with the charge. You know what? I need to meet Aisha Hall. And I guess you could wait, but don't leave out the fact that she is an author and I'm an author, right? So Shawana said, um, Jamila, send Aisha your books. Mm-hmm. So she sent the books to the prison, and on the cover of the books are the prison IDs. So when the books came, I've been waiting. She kept calling, did you get them? Did you get them? She kept emailing. I'm like, no. Well, come to find out, because the prison IDs had actual numbers, the prison ran the numbers, saw that they were real inmates, and sent the books back, said I couldn't have them. Oh. You know, they just scared of the truth. You know how that okay. goes. So, so if you remember me also saying I wrote books, mm-hmm. she wrote books, I know I was inspired by a woman by the name of Wahida Clark, right? So she was writing books, and this is a woman who made so much money, New York Times bestsellers list. So when I came to prison and I started tapping into my ability and gifting to write, she actually inspired me to write books. And me and Aisha actually ended up writing a book together with mm-hmm. Wahida. Okay. Well, um, so it, it journey is crazy. So get ready. Very, very crazy. <laughs> this one, y'all, y'all got to put your seat belt and go <laughs> Because it's about to go down. So, yes, I also was also an author writing books, and I got transferred to the prison that she was at. Okay. And we met. Absolutely. You want to tell how we met? Yeah, so we met in the cafeteria. I remember that. I'm sitting in the cafeteria, and she, I just hear somebody like, Aisha. And I was like, so she came, she said, are you Aisha Hall? And I was like, yeah. She was like, I'm Jamila Davis. I'm the one that sent you the books. And literally from that day, we were inseparable, oh, like wow. inseparable. Oh, wow. Eating together, walking the yard, just coming up with ideas and just, you know, we have a similar vibration, right? So we just meshed. Okay. Like, it was kind of crazy. Like, people thought we was a damn couple, honestly. That's how much we were saying. That's really what we in prison. All the- <laughs> they, you know, they probably thought, like, oh, she didn't turn gay for the stay. <laughs> I was like, no, and not me. Because, you know, that's in prison. That happens a lot. Okay. Very you know? common. Very common. I don't, it's just the And women. if you're together with a person all the time, jelly, they think that you're together. Right. So that okay. happened with me with Lauren Hill. The same similar situation. Me and Aisha hooked up. So we were together for okay. a long time. And what I respected about Aisha is that she was a boss. Right. Okay. So I told you I was at Danbury for seven years. So I was like the godmother of the prison. Mm -hmm. You understood how I got the power from the officers. So I was changing bed, moving people, getting things done that others couldn't get done. So I was a boss there. So I was going to a new place, right? And kind of the position and esteem I had at my prison, Aisha had that at Alderson. Okay. So what I can say is when she and I linked up and we immediately, you know, locked in, Mm -hmm. I immediately, her clout and her power in Alderson kind of transferred to me. So I was able to benefit from the work she did because how okay. I many years was you there? By 2015, 
You was at Ulta Sim for how many years now? Seven, six, seven years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she was okay. there almost the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. So she had privilege and things there. So I gained her privilege. So you will learn about that. Like this is okay. prison women's stuff. It's, it's, it's different. And it's kind of who you connect to, who you know, okay. a lot of that matters. I mean, yeah. like the real world. People of like, you know, similar character. They link together. You have okay. people who are there trying to take advantage of people. Then you have people who are there who get obviously taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. And then you have people who are there who are like leaders, okay. right? That want to kind of make everything flow. And, you know, you have a good heart. and But you also don't take no, no. Can we curse on you? Okay. Oh, okay, you don't take no shit, right? <laughs> All right. That's what's up. So, yeah. So, you, you meet Aisha, mm-hmm. which, you know. Gives you some level of respect. Mm-hmm. You guys become friends. You guys are talking every day. You are mapping out the fact that you have similar energy. So you you, you talk about things you want to do together. Can we oh, talk baby. about the very first thing you guys did together in in prison? I don't even know the very first thing, but I knew that we had these power meetings mm-hmm. every day. The link up was real. Okay. So me and this girl, we was about our business. I was already writing books. She was writing books. So we was like, I right, we want to create some series. Like we knew what we wanted to do. Like you know. By the time I got to Alderson, right, I had already became friends with um, Laura Hill, who had a serious, serious, serious impact on my life. Because Lauren and I kind of had uh, created a build production company. So we was capturing women exiting from prison. So I'm doing that with Lauren daily on the emails. I mean, we'll bug out about that. But like literally, uh, this girl was like my dope. She helped me out every day in the morning with the wake up grind, the, you know, the evening. Right. So by the time I came, I was already on the site. Like I have written books. People were already exiting prison. So we was doing that whole thing. So when I came to get Aisha, it was the recruitment. I'm the like, yo, I already know, you know, out of here for, you know, whatever, 15, 10, 15 million or whatever. She here for the same things. She was getting her money. I know she was about it. I was like, yo, I was interested in intrigue with her story. So okay. first we got to meet each other. She got to tell me more about her story. And then from there, we went immediately to work. It's like, I right, so what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. What's our project that we're going to create? I already had the high price. I had to pay book series, which was different women who were sentenced to a decade plus sentence was already telling their stories through that. So when I came and got with her, I'm like, yo, thinking in my mind, let's make the movie now. Mm-hmm. So we created together the Pink Panther clip. Okay. Right. And I had already known this other girl that was in the federal prison with me. She had already came home. So we was like, yo, we going to hit social media hard and we going to create this Pink Panther click and we going to get to it. And Aisha's like, yo, that's right up my alley. That's right. That's right. Because I'm I'm a writer, you know, so it was perfect. And so Jamela came to me and she's like, you know, we were thinking of the name like to solidify it. And she said, well, I already have a name because I have Pink Panther records. <laughs> so she was like Pink Panther click. So we was like, okay, pink for the women, you know, panther for the strength. And then the click, like, you know, we a group. So that was like the perfect name. And it started ringing bells, crazy. So I thought that was dope, you know? So I'm like, okay, we're about to make this terrible situation into something like magnificent, you know, by bringing everybody together. And we formed a little, a little group, you know? We had, you know, Jamila who came with, she had everything, all the film, you know, and she had invested a lot. Like her family had put up money to film and do all of these things. and. You know, to get your story told on that level, you know, where somebody's actually funding it, to me, that was just like super dope and super sacrificial. Because you coming home, you need money to start your life. But you to right. take fun and put it into something like that, I was like, okay, wow, that's really dope. So she did that. And then we had somebody outside um, who was like doing like the social media stuff and I was doing the writing. So we just came together as a conglomerate. And it was it was going there. It was, it was going good. It was, it was dope. It was so dope. Women that was incarcerated doing their thing. And I remember I used to look at me a little bit like I was crazy because I was telling her, I'm like, yo, because I saw it. You know, I'm a visionary. I could see it in my mind. I was like, yo, sis, we got to get these prison pictures. You know, we're going to get all our, all our tight stuff, boy. We're going to get busy. Because I was already with Teresa Judice from Jersey Housewives. So, sis, if you see any of Teresa Judice's pictures with inmates in it, mm-hmm. I'm in every single picture. Because I helped to stage all of the pictures. Okay. So I was already on the mindset of, okay, we got Teresa, we got Lauren Hill. I'm coming over there. I'm about to pick up Aisha Hall. Yo, we need the pictures, right? right. So <laughs> every single time about the pictures. Like, the pictures are inspired. But you, you, you kind of flipped out on me a little bit about the pictures. Okay. And, and you know 
notice you're not in as many of the So the one that went viral, I wasn't in. So there was a picture of his so, like, Yeah, let's talk about that. Why he wasn't in the picture? The picture went viral. Dude, what? And she was she was pissed at me because I was like, so she was like, come get in the picture. So I was like, who's in the picture? Yeah. She was like, it doesn't matter. You know, we're we're selling our stories, you know, we putting ourselves out there. And I'm like, I'm not getting in the picture with her. So she was like, why? I said, I don't know if she here. Did she tell on somebody? Did she? I'm not getting in the picture with anybody. She's like, oh, you're being ridiculous. You're being oh, difficult. you're being difficult. I'm like, I'm not. So we, so this, so, hold on, hold so on, we argue on, on and calm down. So let's <laughs> get back because there was strategy to this, right? right? right. And she wasn't understanding my strategy, right? Mm -hmm. So my strategy is, I want the baddest chicks on a compound. I'm not just taking regular pictures. We trying to go viral. Right? So I'm not trying to get with your girlfriend, Susie, <laughs> you look dumb, looking crazy with the mustache and all that. I need the fly chicks that's going to come, drip, you know, get yeah. uh, You know what I mean? <laughs> so that the picture could go viral. You feel me? Yes. I was so not I with it. what I was doing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then she was like, hey. So she let me go. We, we agreed to disagree. Okay. And me and the baddies, okay? <laughs> the prison baddies, I had a lot of. We was taking our little picture, and I was standing off to the side, like mm. I don't know her. I don't know her story. I'm not getting the picture with her. You know, oh, like I don't know because I'm not getting the picture. What if she a rat? She was like, "Girl, if you don't get in this picture," I was like, "No." I was like, "Sigh." And then so the picture, and then, the, then the picture happened. Then the picture went viral. <laughs> <laughs> then the yeah, picture went viral. To my brother Jada Kiss, because mm -hmm. Jada Kiss posted the prison pictures, okay. and then they they, they started going viral. Okay. And she was like, see, that could have been good for your music. That could have been good for this, that. And I was like, okay, I mean, you're right, but, you know. So then, yeah. I just I'm a Taurus bull, pictures. so I'm, I'm a little she, stubborn. She started taking a few pictures. That <laughs> get it? She laughed up that I had to take a few <laughs> pictures. And that we did. We okay. took pictures. And I got so many. And people was like, how did y'all get all of these amazing right. pictures from prison? Because usually people have one, maybe it one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we had all. Of we pitches. took over, okay, you know, because you have different jobs in prison. So one of the jobs is photographer. And when they seen us coming over there, they already knew. Nobody else is taking pictures for about two hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did pictures walking, you know, looking like we was on Mob Wives. You know, we took pictures <laughs> like, <laughs> we took some it's pictures. It's a real thing. And you can see them. Right. Right? We gonna, mm -hmm. we gonna put them in the edit so y'all can see these pictures. And y'all pictures with the lit. So y'all are working. Yeah, you, you got so the whole set. Working. This is a photo shoot. I'm gonna just be a direct agent. Yes. I'm on the set of the prison and I'm a cast that agent. And I'm about to make my million dollar movie. Yeah. To make multi-million dollar movie. To make this whole page all make sense. Mm -hmm. So I like that. It's strategy. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So every day we at, we at these picnic benches, right? And we're talking about the plan. I'm like, hey, you should. We put it on paper though. So we writing the vision and we making a complaint with dates, with dates. So we had, we wrote timelines. the vision and I had timelines. Yeah. We going to do this, this, mm -hmm. this, this, and this. We going to do this. And people thought like, oh, you're hearing us. Cause it's not like I'm telling people what we're doing. I'm talking to my partner. Right. This was my partner. And you know what I'm saying? We became co-authors. I'm like, yo, we doing this. We in this click together. You and me, we riding. Right, so every day we talking, and I don't even know how much you believed, right? But I don't know why I believed, because I knew if I could see it, I could be it. When right. people around was hating, like, ah, oh, they bullshit, you know what I mean? These bitches ain't gonna do shit when they get- No, they you know doing I mean? too much, or you know, like, but they just didn't understand. When you're a boss and you're a hustler, it does not matter where you are, mm -hmm. you know? That's a state of mind, you know, because when I started writing my books, you know, um, when I linked up with the publisher, you know, I started getting checks. I was getting 1300 1500 In prison, I don't know if you understand, but $1,500 in prison is like 15000 you know, because people are, you know, I, don't, I didn't want to ask my family. I didn't want to be a burden. So the writing, I was really motivated by how can I help myself? You know what I mean? So when you have that type of mindset and then you link with somebody else with that type of mindset, it's like limitless, which you can accomplish, you know, and we definitely were on that path. Uh, we definitely was on it. I'm like, yo, and what I admired about Aisha is that she was taking care of herself, okay. right? I'm not gonna hold you up. Jamila T. Davis was not taking care of herself. The Davises, right? Mm -hmm. So when people look at me, it's always so crazy because they assume I come from the hood and I did, I don't, right? My parents were educators, my pops is real estate, got wild real estate. So I have bread. My parents is like, just come home, whatever you need. So I had the bread and then I had the bag and I told my parents, look, I wanna do a publishing company. They're like, I, how much we need? Boom, we want to do the spell thing, what you need. So I had that there, and I'm like, yo, Aisha, we ain't even, I, I respect your hustle, but we ain't even got to do that. I got the bag. Like, what we doing? 
Let's line that up. What's your ideas? What's your vision? And then we just started showing up. Like, yo. But you know what? Just I don't, not to interrupt you, but I just want to say, like, that was something I really admired about her, right? Mm-hmm. Because I, as a people, sometimes we, you know, want to, you know, oh, you know, I come from poverty. It's like it gives you a badge of honor, right? But really, that's a false sense of thinking. Mm-hmm. Jamila always spoke about her father was like this real estate mogul. Her mother was this great educator. And I think that it's so important to speak about coming from a legacy of like black wealth, or you know, like black hard work, hard work, and being able to pass that to your mm-hmm. your kids. So she never shied from that. Or tried to front like, oh, you. Know, she always said like, you know, my parents kind of set me up in this position, and I'm going to use that to set other people up. I think that's super, super that's dope. What they you know, me. Mm-hmm. right? So my mom was publishing everybody's books from prison. Mm-hmm. So the girls that needed something or something done, I was always just there, just the real one for them. And I looked at them as my sisters, right? right? Especially when I started understanding that the, the trauma was similar and I bonded. And for me, I was like, yo, we riding for life. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if she knew that I meant that shit. Like, cause you know, people be talking and saying right. a lot and we got to go back cause you got to ask her how she got the prison. Cause her story is crazy in of that. So I don't know if you want to pause first and go to that or yeah, maybe to us. Uh, before but, we get too far in. I need okay, to do like so quick, what you want to yeah. USA Today version, like the quick version. <laughs> what happened? Okay. So um, I had a company called Apogee Financial and um, I found out that there was this other world, right? This world of trading, private trading, where commodities were traded, but not in the public sector, like in the private market. It stands for, it's PPP, not the PPP they do now, not, the not that stuff, but private placement platforms, right? Where people who have large amounts of um commodities maybe on their property or investment property sometimes they have oil um they have natural gas and they're trying to move you know this commodity and they allow people to come in and trade right but privately so some of the requirements to trade are that you have to be worth 50 million 100 million you could spend a million you could spend a hundred thousand but your net worth had to be in the tens or hundreds of millions which naturally kind of pushes our people out of doing business like that Mm -hmm. so I came up with the bright idea when I had a client one time um, that I was in the mortgage business and I had a client ask me for all this money. He asked for like 10 or I forgot the amount, like some crazy millions as a cash out refund. I said, I don't have a lender that would give you that much. What do you need it for? And he was like, I need it to trade in these PPP trading platforms. I'm like, what is that? So he told me I need to show a net worth of at least um, 30 million or whatever it was. So I said, so you need to, you spending that? He said, no, 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 I just need to show it. I'm, I have my own money, but I can't qualify unless I show that I'm worth this amount. Kind of like in the mortgage business, it's kind of like uh, proof of the pie here, yeah. right? So I was like, okay. So then I started doing some research and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a whole market for making people look like they're worth more than what they are so that they can qualify, you know, to get into different platforms. So I came up with this idea to start linking people like that with wealthy people, hedge fund managers, et cetera. So I'm like, how the hell am I going to find these hedge fund people? So I just took it upon myself to start calling up different companies. I did some research. I found a couple of companies that had invested in like uh, wind technology and went bankrupt and then did it again, went bankrupt again. So I'm like, oh, these are risk takers. Maybe they'll be willing to do something like this with me. So I called, 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 called. Finally, I got somebody and um, make a long story short, I got them to put like $100 million or f- like to freeze it basically and add my client to his account. My client can't touch their money, but on paper, it looks like they're worth a hundred million as well. So now that I had that, now I started advertising on different like financial blogs and stuff. You know, anybody looking for proof of funds for a hundred million hit me up. People was hitting me up. Oh, wow. So I was like, all right, what am I charge? I had no idea what they were charging. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna charge a hundred grand. Girl. I got that hundred grand. I gave the guy who put the people on the account 50,000 and I kept 50,000 for myself. And it was no risk to him because they could not access his money. So basically you make it 50,000 for putting somebody on your account. That opened up a whole can of worms. I became the go-to person to get those high end proof of funds. And I was selling 50,000, a hundred thousand, you know, next thing you know, I need a staff. So I bring my, my friends in, uh, these two uh, guys, that's who I started with, Sal Weezy. They came and they started working with me and we were advertising all day. I started learning more about trading and then I just got really, really deep into it. And next thing you know, we doing a million a month, you know? And um, where it went left is I had a client ask me for 
proof of funds for like a billion, some crazy number. And I said, oh, I don't have that. I referred somebody to you already. Just change the paperwork. Just put my name where their name was at. Change the amount. Like, oh, that might work. Okay. He's like, I'll pay you like 100 grand or whatever it was. I said, done. Signed, sealed, delivered. Got that money. Next thing you know, he's referring people that need the same thing. Next thing you know, I'm not even really doing it as much the other way. This is the faster way. This is the way to get the bag quicker. And now my team is bringing in people. So now we looking like the whole boiler room, you know. And um, I had a client take one of those documents. Obviously, they're not official and go and try to get a loan against it. And that's when everything just went left. He tried to get a loan against this uh, fake document and the bank realized it. He told them that he got it from me. So he froze my bank account and the feds got involved and, you know, I was indicted and went to federal prison. How old was you when you went to federal prison? I was 25. So you were doing this at 25? 25. I was doing it at 24, and then I went at 25. And it's so crazy because that's how I was when I caught my charge. I was 25, and I fought for so long, and then I ended up going in at 31. Okay. Yeah, so I I, I, I didn't have the opportunity to fight outside. Mm -hmm. um, I went, you know, I was remanded. But um, me and my entire team, so me on my staff. Which is crazy because generally on white collar crimes, they let you basically stay out like it's not oh they hate situation mm -hmm. where you get <laughs> remanded so that's like whoa so they were they were mad at me i think because i showed like okay there's a formula to this money thing so i can't do that i'm gonna do this so when they came when they originally came to me they didn't arrest me they they hit me with a civil suit and they said the u.s attorney would be reaching out to me so i went back to my round table with my staff like we got to do something else so i had a little money left because um, they seized most of my money, and I started buying gold in Africa, like actual gold. And we turned that gold into another million-dollar play, you know. And then they came. It was like, okay, bitch, you're going down. I think that they just was mad that somebody who looked like me, you know, because it's one thing, like, is this a coincidence? Did you make these millions, you know, you got lucky? But then to do it now. again with a whole nother business that was not related to the first, it was well, like, okay. Can watch it. Right. It was yeah. like, they, they was done. So now they're like, okay, you're going down. But we were buying gold in Africa. I, I, I started with like what, I had like 50,000. I borrowed 50,000 from my grandfather from his retirement fund. And I flipped it into like a million doing the gold. A whole different business. Then the feds came. Baby, when they come, they come. Guns blazing, yeah. they, they came. And they was like, you? Oh no, sweetheart, you're, you're not. You're, I mean, they hit me with witness tampering. They hit me with obstruction of justice. They hit me with conspiracy. I mean, they was they was trying to give me like 20 something years, you know, and I'm like, all I did was make some paperwork showing people were worth more money. I didn't steal no money. I didn't, um, you know, put a gun to somebody head or falsely advertise. They knew what they were buying. I supplied it. But and how much time did you ultimately get sentenced to? Ten and a half years. So I got 12 and a half years and you got 10 and a half. Years. Ten, and that was a deal, according to them. That was like we, we, we being nice. It's crazy. So when, you know, people of color, especially women get charged for white collar crimes, especially for the millions and amounts that we went down for, they try to take your head off for real. So not only do you get punished for the crime, you get punished for daring to be a black woman. Right. All right? Doing this. Because like my judge told me, I didn't belong in the area where we were getting those houses at. So it's like a double punishment. So then watch your heart and watch your heart get in the good old white boy's lane and this black girl thinks she gonna do that. We gonna sit her down forever, and that's where the time comes in. Yeah, she's, she's a real thing. She's telling the truth, and I mean, I started doing some crazy things, right? So I, I started, you know, I bought like seventy five houses in Detroit. I um, opened up a bar and a lounge. I bought warehouses. I got tractor trailers. Like I was like, I gotta diversify, mm -hmm. right? And I think that, and that all happened after they came. This was after, so they were like. Oh, she didn't. She didn't leveled up after we came. Oh, nah, she's going down. So, you know, they they really wanted to break your spirit, you know. And That's what it was a challenge. I mean, I'm a strong person, and I usually don't even speak about it because I fight inwardly. Mm -hmm. I don't really fight on the outside. You know, you'll really almost never really see me cry, or but privately, I did. It's just that nobody really saw it, you know, because. It, it breaks you down, you know what I mean? Like losing your freedom. I don't care if you staying in a hotel because people are like, oh, you was in the feds. Well, isn't it nice? No, I don't care if I was in the Ritz Carlton. Absolutely. If you're away from the world and your family, it's a punishment and it hurts, you know what I mean? So, 
So I was attracted to her mind. I thought she was dope. And oftentimes it's hard to meet people who kind of think like you and have your spirit. So instantly we hooked up. And just like me, while I was locked up, I read hundreds of books and so did she. And I remember when you put me onto the Prosperity Bible. My favorite book. Yo, that was a game changer for me. So it's this book called the Prosperity Bible. And it has what, like 25, it's, about, it's, it's like this thing. Mm -hmm. as 25 or 30 of the most powerful books written mm -hmm. about money, mindset, shift, changes. And one of my favorite books was in the Prosperity Bible called Thinking Grow Rich, right? Mm -hmm. By Napoleon Hill. So me and Aisha is having conversations about stuff that people don't really talk about. And I'm like, yo, she cool. Mm -hmm. So that was our mindset, the daily check-in, like, all right, so what we doing? You know, we knew how to manifest based on, you know, the words that we was reading. So it was writing out the vision, putting dates to it, going in, and that's what we was on. We was like, yo, we know we about to exit prison, so we gonna come home and we gonna rise to the top. And right. that and us, we did. Okay. We, we definitely did. We definitely, and then we came home, and it just it got crazy. It got crazy in a good way, and it got crazy oh, in a and I have a crazy way. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now it's like all right. So people listen, and they want to understand this thing, right? So I got it out in June 2017, mm -hmm. and you got out in October. October, yes, that's coming October. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got out of prison, I had about fifty thousand followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? So I remember coming home from prison and I'm telling my following after posting all these prison pictures of ah, like people was going crazy on the mm -hmm, internet because mm -hmm. we had developed a fan base right. from behind the wall. We kept saying ping ping the click, ping ping the click, yo, 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 we do a ping ping the click. So everybody was trying to get down with the movement. And I had all these bad chicks. Like, so my vision for the ping ping the click was girls from every single city. Because mm -hmm. remember now, we behind the wall and the fans, it's chicks from Chicago getting it. It's chicks from Detroit getting it. It's chicks from Miami getting it. It's chicks from Delaware getting it. It's chicks from every city you could imagine. It's chicks that's boss chicks that's getting to it. They either get to it, they do got to it. Somebody got to it, they about that life. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to do, which is so crazy, it's like what I'm doing now with the Black Women's Lives Matter community, which is all community. I was trying to unite and galvanize formerly incarcerated women to come together to create change. Right. Right. And boy, oh boy, I ain't know what I was in for. <laughs> Put that little recipe together because, baby, that was a recipe. Okay. So I got home in July. We went viral on the internet. Andy and Toya actually ended up reaching out to me through our DM. So by the time Aisha got ready to come home, because I told Aisha, I don't know if you thought I was like, right? I remember the day I left and Aisha, she's not even an emotional person, mm -hmm. but I saw it in the eyes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We was like, see, what's the color purple to see? <laughs> right? And I, yeah, I knew oh, I've never passed. Yes. So we, and I said, don't worry. I got you. Yeah, she I definitely said, don't. I said, what? You, you, you should date? Mm -hmm. I said, let me go home real quick. I said, I'm going to go get this bag up. And I said, yo, you ain't got to worry about shit. I got you. I'll be right back. So I hugged her real tight. Said, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was it was a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Serena was where you remember? My mm -hmm. parents came because already. Oh, but on the, on, uh, first of all, okay. first of all, in the prison, right? So they have all of these rules about how you leave. And so. You know, they were listening to our phone calls, seeing us like kind of conspire how we were going to come home and take over the world. Mm -hmm. And they started hating. So the day Jamila left, there was rumors that there was going to be all this media there and all of that. So they basically like tried to shut us down. Oh, you know, you remember that they tried to shut us down. It was crazy. They were like, oh, you know, this person can't be on the compound. And they just hate us, you know, and it's like we're trying to do something so big and something so positive with our lives. And here y'all come. Do y'all really care about us, quote unquote, rehabilitating? Right. Or y'all just here to be haters and hold us back? You know, and that, that was the energy. Is, though, Aisha, we had the compound galvanized, right? And we did. But he paid the click was going viral. For, so, so people, family members was like, y'all, we see the pictures. So we had literally a fit club in the prison of all the chicks like, yo, my cousin seen it. Jerome, the, so we... So they knew the power because we had the women together. So now I'm leaving and it's like giving the women hope like, yo, she leaving. It's about to go there like this right. on. And then I guess that also probably they ain't like that. 
nervous. So they tried to shut it down, but we ain't. We ain't let that stop. And they did the same thing to me. So the day I left, you know, you you weren't there. The day I left was crazy. I put on a whole concert the day before I the day I left. I had about a hundred people on the yard, and I got my little my little that speaker. Because we didn't even talk to, to them about that. So Aisha raps. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things that we was doing. We was putting on plays and doing all of this stuff and talent From shows. Prison. Mm -hmm. And then she we remember you wrote like you you used was rapping songs. We was having my son record the songs and putting them out on it. Like it it, it was <laughs> <laughs> We did a lot. We did a lot. a lot. We definitely our name still rings bells there. Like people will be like, you know, they they was here and we definitely left our stamp there. We we did a lot. And I, I didn't know you did a whole concert. I did a whole concert. So look, check it out. The the day I left, um it was like, oh my gosh, I get emotional when I think about it. So I did so much for so many women there. I was from legal work to Christmas plays and just putting on things and counseling and talking, just everything. And the day I left, I remember, you know, that hill mm -hmm. and you jump out of this thing. It looks like a, a bread truck, mm -hmm. right? And my family didn't know I was in the bread truck. So when they open up the gate, I come out and they're like, oh, so next thing you know, I hear, Isha, Isha. I'm like, so I look up on the hill everybody's up on the hill. Wow. They, then they switch from Isha and they start saying, Poppy, Poppy, that's my grandfather. Because my grandfather did my bed with me where he wrote me every day. And I would share his letters with the girls in my unit and stuff. So everybody kind of came to love Poppy. And when we were leaving, they were like, Pop, they saw him. You know, he's, he's on a cane now, you know, because I was gone 10 years. That's a long time he aged, you know. And he, he was like teary eyed because they were like, Poppy, it was like, all of them up there. It was crazy. it was crazy. So I was like, wow. And as bad as prison is, I almost felt bad for leaving. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the psychological impact that prison has on you. It's almost like, what's that syndrome? Were you like in love with your captor? Uh, yeah. Oh, what does that call? What is um, it called? When you're in love with your. When you're in love with your, your captor. What is that syndrome called? Mm. I don't even know, you know what I'm talking saying, about. It's like a slave like that. Yeah. Stockholm. Is it Stockholm syndrome? Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So it was like, damn, like, you know, do I even want to leave them? But oh, that's wow. sick. Cause of course yeah. you want to leave, but it's like, you make family, you make family, you know? And, 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 and that's what she was to me, my family. Mm -hmm. So when I first got home from prison, of course I went to see my kids. My kids were nine and 11 when I left and I didn't come home till they was 18 to 21. So I wanted to get my kids together, but it was almost like as equally important as my kids were, my prison sisters meant the same mm -hmm. shit to me. They were now my immediate family. And I was determined that everything we wrote down, everything we said we was going to do, we had to get it done. Mm -hmm. So I came home in my first 90 days. I was supposed to be thinking about getting settled in, getting acclimated to society. I'm thinking about Aisha. And I'm thinking about what she told me, like, yo, I got, I'm not sure what it's going to be like when I get home. Miller, cause I, I'm like, now nah, we're going to figure this out. We got to get it done. So I'm like, yo, I, I got to get my girl straight. So I'm in my mind with that. So then I'm telling Yanny, yo, she coming home. She's like, yo, y'all got a movement. We going to have the cameras. So just like Laura Hill got the cameras for me when I came home, Yandy got the cameras for Aisha when she came home. And it was just, it was she's, just down, she's downplaying it, right? So let me just say like, okay. While I was doing like my last couple of months, I mean, this girl was camp campaigning for me really, really hard. Not just her other members of Pink Panther, but she was campaigning for me hard. She had the free Aisha Hall t-shirt, was posting on Instagram. She had celebrities saying, yo, my sister's coming home, uh, you know, telling her story, but also attaching minds to her, you know? So it was like, I don't want to make it light. That's a big yeah. deal, you know, a really, really big deal. And... I was, tra I was traumatized in prison, you know, I, I, I was traumatized, you know, I lost my father, I lost my brother, um, my family's house broke down, and then I came home, my grandfather did my whole bed with me, he died, so it, it was a lot, it was a lot, and, um, you know, to have somebody that cares that much, it, it meant a lot, mm -hmm. and I don't think that people really understand how women is impacted different in prison, you know, I don't, I don't have any children, you know, I put that on prison. Those are your, your child birthing years. Those are your years when you make your mistakes. Maybe you date the wrong person and you learn from that. And, you know, that that 25 to 35, like that time is so important, you know. So as as much as I love my family and I have my family, I have my friends, you know, Jamila did a lot for me. You know, I had Jamila, I had Shawana, that's my best friend. She sent me money, like, the whole time I was there, you know, uh, got my come home clothes. 
And when I came home, you know, like I remember me and Jamila, we really didn't have money like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember that she had got this credit card and um, she took me shopping. She split the credit card with me and um, bought me some clothes, you know, um, and I really didn't have nothing. You know, my family house burned down, so I lost everything. So, you know, and I've never got to publicly speak um, about that with her. And um, this is so dope because, excuse me, I'm like emotional about she's it. she's not even a cry. I'm not. No, but this is this first time. We all do the toughness yeah, of yeah. time. But we bonded like that in a real, 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 real way. And she gave me hope because I also, I came home to this strange place. So people don't understand. It's like, I, I always, I keep doing the color purple, but the yeah. color purple has some real shit in it, right? So what was, um, um, it wasn't, it, it Harpo, um, what's the, the, the lady that came home from prison? Oprah. Sophia? Yeah, Sophia, right? <laughs> Remember when Sophia yeah. went to prison? Yeah. And she came home after all those years? Yeah. And she said, I don't know none of y'all people no more. Right. Right? That's how I felt. So I yeah. got from prison to this new world. And, yes. You know, yeah. I left when my space was out and I came home to Facebook and it, I didn't know what I was stepping into. So some of the people, I was happy to see them, but I was waiting for my sisters right. because that was what I knew. That was family to me. So for me, I'm like, all right, we're going to come home. I used to drop this record. We gonna blo- We had a plan. Yes, we did. We, we had a plan. We serious about the plan and everything we implemented worked. And we was united. And it was like, all right, let's go. So we finally get home. I remember hugging Aisha so hard, man. Oh, that video was crazy. When she came home, she came straight to my mom's office, right? Mm-hmm. And she got out that car. The pink pin, the click was there. We left all her. We went live. People was bugging from all across the world. Like, yo, they home. It's on. Because we mm-hmm. told them, you know, that was like how I started. It's going down. It's going down was a thing that I was saying to people to stay tuned. Right, I was speaking mm-hmm. our lives into existence because I knew the power of the spoken word. I said, if I can speak it, it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So I kept telling everybody, yo, stay tuned, y'all. It's going down. And then he was watching things like, y'all, y'all, y'all. It's going down. <laughs> <laughs> the hell it went down, baby. We leveled well, up. We definitely leveled up. We definitely leveled up. And not only did we level up, we helped so many other people level up. You know, we help so many other people come home and figure it out just by even if we didn't speak to them directly, just watching us, being motivated by us. Like there's nothing lower than prison. You know, we talked about buried alive. Mm-hmm. You, you, life is just passing you by, you know, relationships. You know, I was in a relationship, so I thought, you know, but he went off and married somebody else while I was away, you know, and it was like I, the things you thought, you know, life goes on. So prison is a form of torture. You know, you sit back and you watch life literally go on without you or you watch your family suffer with you. And that's also not fair because they it's like motivation. Mm-hmm. So we was like, all right, we got each other together. We could do anything. And then success happened. So with success came the bullshit. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was successful already prior to going to prison. I have reached a certain amount of success. So did Aisha. Right. Mm-hmm. But everybody around us wasn't necessarily used to success. We didn't have a whole bunch of money, but we had a whole bunch of popularity Mm -hmm. and respect. The streets respected us, right? When we came through, it was like, yo, we was there. And then that's when all the confusion and the craziness happened. And it rocked our world. Because my friend, she was like one of my closest. Like I knew some of the other girls, but I didn't have a relationship with anybody like we had a relationship because we spent so much time planning. We were put so much time putting the plan together, together in that crazy stuff. We had a whole situation. Our captain had done got locked up in the mall. Cut. Like we, it's a movie. Every day in the federal prison, it was a movie, right? And so with that said, that's when the craziness started. Me and Jamela were like inseparable. And then things kind of went left, right? And I remember how that actually happened. So there was a lot of, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an artist, right? So um, my whole thing was, I'm, I'm in prison, I'm getting older, I wanna come home, I wanna push my music. But we also have the agenda of prison reform that we're pushing as well as a group. So I kinda have my individual thing, and then we have the group thing. And sometimes there was like, what is the priority, right? Cause now this ain't prison no more. We all coming from a situation where 
we eat and technically we can eat for free. It might be some bullshit, mm. but we can eat for free. Mm -hmm. We got a place to go sleep. It might be some bullshit, but we got a bed, a cot. We got these things. Coming home after doing so much time, now you have to fend for yourself. Now you have to figure out how you're going to make a living. Sure, Jamila family has some money, but Jamila's a woman. She wants to be able to make her own. Me, I want to be able to make my own. I was sleeping literally in the bed with my mother. I didn't even have a room. So I was like, I got to focus on this music. So sometimes we would go to meetings and then we're talking about prison reform. And I'll be like, oh, but you want to hear this song or whatever? So Miller would be like, well, we focused on this. Then you have people in her ear saying, well, geez, she's an artist. She kind of want to take the platform for herself and not for the group, which is not, which was not the case. But when we're trying to figure out what direction we're going in and then you have people who you trust or people who are intimately around that say things like that, you know, it puts a little... It puts a little wedge. For me, I always just wanted to see you blow as a rapper. So I didn't care about that. I don't. I wanted you to pursue. This control was being said. Like, no. like she wanted see, to take the platform is, and stuff is, like that. You know, this is bullshit, right? So who I am is still who I am now. Mm -hmm. I do purpose work, right? Mm -hmm. So we went from purpose work for me was okay, telling our stories so we could help change the system that's incarcerating women for decade plus sentences. I wanted to humanize us, right? I already helped women write books that liberated them, that helped them get home from prison. So that was what I was on. I was always on purpose for the cause, right? So once we made that is it, true. that's why you gotta be careful about words. We called it Pink Panther Click. What's a click? A click is a selected few members, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what started happening first. Remember I told you, it was all up to me about, yo, we fly if we got chicks from Ohio, Detroit, Minneapolis, Mississippi, right? We fly it to me like that. But then it became, no, it's going to be these two, three people. And we going to just do this two, three thing. It's just all about us. And I'm just like, whoa, hold up. I don't know if this is what I signed up for. So it started being like crazy stuff. And I'm not even saying with Aisha, because remember, it became a click. And then a click, we had about four or five people or six or seven, but then it was only really three because then it used to come back like, no, it should only be up. Like, I wasn't in it for that. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it for that. Like, for me, it was about how are we going to change this wicked system that took us by storm? Now are we going to tell these two stories or these three stories and we're going to click up and it just be us? It's how do we do this to create change? Because that's who I am. I'm a change maker. So I never put the script. I had to move on and do other things, but I never stopped working on purpose because I understood there was purpose. And so Aisha, her music, that was supposed to be a part of the purpose. Her music was supposed to open up the door and gave us more popularity to do what we did. did. So I never cared about Aisha doing her music. I wanted her to do it. I, I felt like that was a part of the strategy to get where we had to go. But it became a thing, I believe, when people saw the closeness of our relationship, mm -hmm. They felt like it was time to come in and mess that up. Right. So that's what I was, that's what I was getting to. So I guess like, you know, you, you, you know, like if you look at how close you guys were every day meeting, when you're, when you're, when you're away, you come out, you're there for each other. At any point when all of this was happening, did either one of you consider, let's just go back to what we did when we were in prison. Let's talk about the plan so we can kind of get back on track. Well, we did that a few times. We mm -hmm. we we definitely tried to do that. And it just was a lot going on. It was a lot. And you got to remember, like, there were no boyfriends. There were so many new people. And people were enamored because of the success. And that people wanted to attach themselves. And it just was, it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. It was definitely crazy. But, you know, as... As more refined, you know, because I, I was going to say mature, but I was more mature, but more refined. When you look back and you have, and, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, mm -hmm. And, I, you know, there's always things that could have been done better, you know. And now when I look back, I'm like, well, I could have handled this this way. Or, you know, I could have not had an emotional rant at this time. Maybe I could have handled it this way. And I look at where I am now and how I reacted to things then. And I could have done it differently but I think that's where everything in, in life you know what I mean because the respect will always always be there with her and for her because you know not only did she do good stuff for me she did stuff for so many people but when you're dealing with 
boss women and you're dealing with people who are used to, because we're not like men. You can find, you know, especially boss men, a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. But usually a woman like Jamila, a woman like me, I'm usually one of a kind. I don't see other women like that. I wasn't around that. So I'm used to running my show. Jamila, she runs her show. And then other members of the group, they run their show. So now when you put all that together, right, for the first time, coming out of prison, coming out of trauma, coming out of trying to set up your new life, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of, well, what if this one thinks like this? Or, oh, this one said this. And, you know, the typical shit with women. And we really wanted to be so different than that. Mm -hmm. And it was very kind of sad that it's like, damn, we fell into some of those things. Mm -hmm. and, I, and nobody was like, you know, trying to, well, I know I can speak for myself. And I'm speaking for Miller as mm -hmm. well. Trying to, like, do anybody harm or see anybody not do well. But sometimes some people, you know, I, I will say this. Me and Jamila did the most time. So there were times when somebody wanted just Jamila or somebody wanted just me. I mean, you can't really substitute 10 years mm -hmm. or 12 year sentence, you know, that people that have done much less time than that. It's a different experience. If you can come home and you still got everything, it's not the same. So to start from the bottom view is because they wouldn't understand exactly what we meant, meant, right? So I came home and within a few months from me coming home, I was offered a uh, a television special on CBS's Pink Collar Crimes. So they did an hour episode about my life, right? We got entertainers, superstars, legends that don't got an hour episode about their life, right? So they're right for that. Shortly after that, BET called for American Gangster Track Queen series. Mm -hmm. I was one of the main pitches that helped to get the series green lighted because mm -hmm. of the Pink Collar Crimes thing. Mm -hmm. So we did that. Aisha was also on American Gangster, mm -hmm. right? So it was like, Certain people was getting called, other people wasn't getting called. So that was catty shit. All oh, because of da, 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 da. she tried to do this. And then me and Yandy and Tamika Valerie got close. So we was doing work together. And I'm not thinking it's going to be a situation. But the group felt like, oh, you're supposed to be with Pink Pink the Click. You ain't supposed to do that with Yandy and to me. I'm like, I'm trying to get my back. What you mean? So it became this territorial mm -hmm. shit. It became, yo, we can't let nobody in this. Oh, that was my idea first. And now you're doing this. And it was just a lot of that. You know, it was a lot of that. And it was like, it, it was, was toxic. It, mm -hmm. it, yeah. It was toxic mm -hmm. because I depended on these women. Like I was codependent on them for my, for everything. Mm -hmm. So when this shit happened, yo, this shit rocked my life. Oh, because these were my sisters. So here, so I guess it, within the Pink Panther click, what is the, the final thing that just separated everybody? So I remember there was this one girl in the crew who was on another reality show. So I guess she was trying to pull members to whatever else she was doing. Now, mind you, my parents had spent tens of thousands of dollars on trying to get us a deal. Right. So the girl was like, yo, we shouldn't get now. Mind you, this is not even somebody that I, I know. I don't even like I just did it on a strip. But, yo, I respected you. I put you in a situation. I, you know, I helped you with a book. I gave you some stuff like, yo. And then she be how I take it. Look, you know, the final stuff for me. We to go recruit up because she was trying to set us up with something. And I was like, yo, go do a scissor rail deal. And I'm like, yo, do We don't got to do that. We already got the sizzle. We just spent tens of thousands. Like, not understanding the business, she telling the crew, I'm trying to take their likeness and image and da, da, da. So kind of similar to the shit me and Topeka talked about, right? Right. So it's like, you, I done put up all the bread. I done used all my contacts, everything I got in me to get us to a point. Now the girl is doubled back with them to a production company to do something else. And the shit that hurt the hell out of me is that they got together without me and went with the girl and did something on a platform and then put it on Instagram. And all my people was hitting me up like, yo, that's supposed to be the Pink Panther click. Then you helped to start that and you ain't even in it. That was the shit for me. I was just like, yo, I can't believe these are some people that's supposed to be my sisters. And it's all crazy because it's manipulation. It's, it's, Oh, she trying to, she trying to be the boss of us. She try, yo, we don't need us. We about to boom, 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 boom. You know, and then talking bad shit, just talking shit against me. That was just crazy. It just was insane. And I cried my eyes out because I'm like, yo, these are supposed to be my sisters. Jesus, I love y'all. Like, why would you do that to me? Like, what, what is this about? And I realized at that point, I had to finally 
separate myself. Mm -hmm. And that shit was probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Because I just came home. I was trying to get my crippings. I ain't know what was going to happen next. I'm still scared. Mm -hmm. And now I'm screaming out, pee pee at the click, pee pee at the click. And then I want to be messy. So I never spoke on this shit. I never told nobody this story. This story we telling right here is the first time today that I've ever shared this shit publicly with anybody. Mm -hmm. I took it on a chat. People were sending and putting up some women on, she this, she that. I, 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 I had to walk alone. I had to take my, my power back. Mm -hmm. Because these women took my power and I feel like they smeared it. Took my kindness for weakness. And that shit hurt the hell out of me. So I had to separate. That and that's, 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 that's crazy. And it's, and it's sad because we kind of went through something similar because, you know, I was told at one time, like I was so, kicked out so of the group, but and I'm like, huh? look, if we could go back just a little bit. So at the separation of this, right. Mm -hmm. And the, the other production company and the other girl leading the other girl, were you, did you go with those girls? Oh, yeah, I went, I went, with I girls. went and I went and it was like, there was a, and what I referred to at the time mm -hmm. was there was a time when I was told you know, that I was kicked out of the group by someone, right? And then you remember, yeah, I went to the, um, this is 50, I think, and I wasn't there. It was three other ones and I wasn't there. And I felt like so bad. And I'm like, dang, like, so, so, then, so then now you have two major players in this situation feeling a way, like I felt a way. Uh, I don't even remember what happened with that. Something happened and I, I wasn't there. I think me and Jamila had like, we were going back and forth because we will debate. You know, it's a love there, but we will we will debate. Sometimes we have different opinions, but at that time, I don't know, it kind of went left, and they went and did what they did, and I, I wasn't there. Yeah. So now, when this new situation came about, it was like that story could be played on. You know what I mean? Like, so it was just like a lot of emotional, um, like, trauma with that. And then I felt like, so apparently they said that they asked you, and I was on a call. I'm not saying they said I was on a call, and he asked her about, coming with the group and Jamila no. said no you don't no I ain't get asked to come with because remember I, you said they asked me if I wanted to do a deal that I didn't think was an oh yeah that's what I'm talking so about I yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yo my parents done put up fifty thousand dollars why are we gonna play with somebody to get some shit done for five bands or three but I could I could buy for that so it, it the whole point of it was y'all shitting on the connect and then the end, the end, what did you get? Nothing from it. You, you, you killed the lifeline to go do something that didn't make business smart. If it was a deal for us to go blow or go do something that was solid, I would have been with it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why would we, after we spent all this bread and got our own footage, go to somebody else to go get a scissor reel deal when we got all our own stuff that didn't make sense? And I think that that conversation, like when we tried to have the conversation, it kind of just went left and sometimes people you know that's a big investment and you know sometimes when people do stuff for people that you don't really know like that or you're not that close with it's like oh that's you know we move on and we'll try this but the impact on her family is mm -hmm. is different this is hard-earned money that's spent and sometimes people don't really put the same respect on other people's money that you put this is her family this is her family. i would do like that if it was my poppy you know, my grand so I, I understood that part, but I don't think it was fully understood. That conversation should have been more in depth. Mm -hmm. It was like a little bit too too much arguing instead of like, listen, let's just be real here. Look at this money that was spent. We can't let this money just get thrown away. You know, we need to find but a way to bring it all together. That, right. So it was just about the hype. Yo, somebody else led the help to lead the way, the path. Now we think we got something else, so we gonna spin off, right? Mm -hmm. So you spit off for me. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, I was mad about it at first, but it was God because my job was done with that. I did what I needed to do for everybody to get whatever they needed to get. And I needed to get it for myself. Mm -hmm. But it was a hard lesson to learn because it was like my friends that I loved and I cared about. Yo, you stabbing me. This is, if I could understand if it was like, yo, you know, we all sat down together and said, hey, under a tree one day, this is the plan, right? I put the plan together with Lori the hell. This is the store I met any of them. I didn't even know them like that. Lauren was like, yo, Miller, this is what you need to do. You need to get the stories of the women in prison. I'm telling you, it's a lane for that. So I met Lauren, me and Lauren started the production. Then from that, 
I would die. You should have, I know I'm, I'm mad high right now, but it, it's taking me back to the moment. I'm some shit. I still got to heal from. Mm -hmm. And then I went back and I'm like, yo, I'm bringing another plan, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling them, yo, Lauren Hill said this. We should do this. Let's do this. Let's go. And we go. And some of them didn't even know each other. One, and some of the main corporates didn't even, I'm a casting agent. I put people together. Then the very people I put together, like, yo, we gonna create change. This is what we gonna do. We gonna stay in purpose. They like, oh, F that. But you know, I will say in defense of the group, I will say, cause I, you know, Jamila wasn't involved in some of those conversations. In, in, in their minds, I was trying to help. I was trying to continue with what she was doing. That was the mindset. It wasn't like a grimy mindset cause I don't participate in grimy stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like, I don't my, think you ever had a grimy mindset. I think you had a mindset of getting on, doing what you got to do. But I feel that people had a grimy mindset because it was more so about competition. You know what I mean? It was, it did, it, it, it was no more about purpose. I was going to say, that's what it, once you said you, you had partnered with other people to individually put yourself in a position to now bring the group, right? Then it be, it seems like it kind of broke up and it became like this competition of who you know and what you could get done. But and impatience. It but, also but looks like it also are waiting. Like at, you know? at this state, it just seems the most vulnerable for you both. You know, being home, reconnecting with your families, accepting who's no longer there, all the things that you've lost. It seems like a very at this very vulnerable state, which is like what we've talked about on other shows. This snake or this tox this toxic pe person, people are able to come in and break down what you guys had built up. That's what happened. To yeah, me. I think. Yeah, I think that, like I said, you know, and I'm a, I'm the peacemaker. You know what I mean? I'm the peacemaker of the group. You know, I love everybody. I really try to put myself in people's shoes. People go through different traumas and they act in different ways based on that. And I'm always the peacemaker mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you know, sometimes stuff will be the perfect storm. It'll look one way, mm -hmm. and it might not all the way be that. You know, and I would always try to speak on that, and then sometimes it would backfire. And sometimes people would get mad at me, you know, well, why you talk to her? And why, you know, I, I'm not the type of girl that says, you don't talk to her, I'm not talking to her. It's right. so crazy because, like she said, I had picked, picked the records, right, before I went to prison. You know, then it became like, oh, she didn't create the name. Well, so how do we get from pink paint to click the pink paint? It was crazy. I've never seen no woman, babe. But in, in defense of us, you never see nothing like that because there's never been nothing like that. So don't take away from what was created. Right. You know, it's not like we were mirroring something that was done before. The challenges that we experienced was like, it's almost kind of like black people. When people criticize us, oh, y'all kill each other, y'all do this. Nobody been through the trauma that black people been through. So same with prison. Now we, now we can take that on a microcosm and say nobody been through what we've been through as a group coming together and then trying to make it work. All those challenges, we weren't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So now we come home, you have all these emotions. Everybody's trying to rebuild their life. Everybody's trying to, I think I'm looking out for you, but you taking it as I'm offending you. Now I'm offended because you thought I was offending you. Now I'm going to talk shit. This is the energy that was happening. So I was able to see all sides. And then you have mental illness too. You have real life mental illness. And I've, I've seen it. I've seen it play out. And it's like, okay, let me just chill out because there might be something a little off here. You know, and I had to look at the whole picture and I had to realize that what we did was never done before. And you're going into unknown territory, you know, you know, and sometimes people take stuff for granted. That's a lot of money that was spent. If my family put up that kind of money, I'd be pissed too. But you know, okay. so, so we separate mm -hmm. and you, you, you go with the Panther twos. <laughs> <laughs> And, and the like pink panthers. Oh, that's funny. Yo, I'm done it. I'm done. No, well, it's still the same group. It's just, it's just that Jamila wasn't there. Okay. So that, what I'm saying is, okay, is now that you go and you guys do this thing, is it, was it what you hoped it would be? Did well, I didn't want benefit that. No, I mean, we went, you know, it was like somebody. So what happened was, I believe that somebody made an offer for the group, they saw what was happening, made an offer, and then um, wanted us to come down and see what they were talking about. So, you know, I went. Um, it was good. You know, there was a conversation. Um, it was just kind of like to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, we ended up, you know, not doing it, you know, for whatever reason. I don't even really know what happened. But um, when I think back about it and I see the group, I can see like Jamila, if she sat there and watched that, that would be like very hurtful. Like these are people that, you know, we were all working together and then for us to be there without her mm -hmm. um, and for her to watch that, I'm sure that, that was that was hard, you know. But at the same time, it's like, oh, you don't want to come? It was like, OK, well, we're going to still do it. That was the attitude. It was like, oh, they were looking at it like she was trying to hold back from moving forward. But that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. But that's how it was perceived. Oh, she don't want to come because she's not in charge of it. But it had nothing to do with being in but charge of it. She's not in charge of it, but she's the one that started it. Mm -hmm. This is the right. So that's that's that's, that's she's not, right. So uh, what? I wish she don't want to come because she had a charge. Something like that, and I played her. You know what I'm saying? Like even to this, like Lauren, I give her all respect because. I wasn't thinking about certain things. She, I, so I'm never going to disrespect the queen. Mm -hmm. I'm a miller. I'm a boss in my own right. I get to it in my own right. But she's Lauren. She do what she do, and I respect her too. Mm -hmm. Why can't I, I don't understand? Mm -hmm. But it's all right. And you know, I'm still not completely healed, so I'm not going to be surprised. No, well, that, well, that's what this show is about. No, it's okay. That's exactly what this show is about. about. But you know what? I will say but so. So, what does this conversation look like? Let's. I mean, yeah. look. <laughs> I mean, they want some stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of raw emotions. But this it's, is a big deal. Yes. Because a very big deal. don't know is, like, for real, for real, this is my sister. I love her. I would do some shit with this girl right here that I ain't been through with nobody in my entire life. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt a friend that I'd have been through some of the stuff that I would do this girl with. I would die for this girl. Mm -hmm. I would lay down on the track and die for this girl. So, uh, so hard. I loved all her. I loved all her even before I loved all me. Before I got my bag together, I'm like, hey, sister, come home up and get your man together. Mm -hmm. We gonna do this shit, man. She came home, she had a job. It was like, yo, you gonna be good. I told you I got you. You know what I'm saying? My best friend sat for a car for her. I'm like, yo, yeah, she they got me the Range Rover up. I'm watching her. Having to take the Long Island Railroad without a fucking coat, a real coat. I'm like, yo, T, we out there on car, yo. Let's get this, man. My best friend sat for a car. We get, I'm like, yo, we gonna ride to the end. And that's what it was for me. I meant that. I told her something in my purpose, my I meant that. Man, what I said to her. And we rode out on that. It was a random life for me. It was a rare to see I didn't play. My love is special. I don't give my love in way easily, but when I do, I mean it. I mean it because I'm a real friend. I stood tall. I'm like, yo, we got this, so let's go. Then we was there. We was almost at the promised line. We was right there. Everything was lined up. Yo, everybody loved it. They loved it because it's the camaraderie. And I was explaining it to them. See, they didn't, they didn't understand what I was trying to tell them. It's not about me. It's not about them as individuals. It's a part of the group. It's the collective. It's what the movement stood for. It's about purpose. But when the purpose left the group, everything left. Because mm -hmm. you're trying to chase something that God ain't co -sign. He didn't co -sign that part. He co signed purpose. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole point. We got sisters still in prison that served in double and triple life sentences for nothing. We were supposed to get them free. That was the purpose. We said we was going to go back and get our sisters free, and we not doing none of that. Now we worried about chasing the bad. We got to get low. We, and then we doing all this other stuff. But what we said we was coming to do, and then we going to stab the person in the back that helped try to put the situation together. It was crazy to me, but it was manipulation. It was the devil just got in the midst of the movement. So I don't blame no one person. It was a spirit that took hold of the individuals. And it was like that spirit got a hold and then it was nothing we could do. It was it was no coming back, it was so crazy. It was so crazy mm. that there was no coming back from it. So I had to separate myself in order to heal. So I was in the dark space for a very long time because the plan was this. It's like warning death almost, like the death of something that was so I mean, have, have you guys since even spoke about no. this? We ain't talk, cause I've been in my feelings. <laughs> but how does it make you feel? And I call. She's I, consistent. I call my DMs, you know. And she's because they can't be like, why she calling me? <laughs> cause I'm still in my feelings. And my friend is very emotional. I know. Pain. 
Miller, tell him I'm, I'm not an emotional person. Uh, that's what we thought until you sat here on the couch. Yeah, you know, because that that's that's real, like, that's deep. That's no, passion. I mean, the both of But it takes a lot to get me there. So that just should say a lot. But she's emotional. And sometimes that's how it would be like, I'm like. But it's that emotion. And she's like. That, passion, that creates greatness. Because yeah. if I don't really feel you, I'm hot or cool. I'm up or down. If I ain't with it, I ain't with it. But if I love you, mm -hmm. did you hear me tell you I would die for that girl? Mm -hmm. Lay on the train tracks if I have to so she could get across to the other side? Yeah. I meant that shit. Like, people don't be on that. No, and they don't. What she don't understand is the real deal to it is I was jealous of the relationship I had with her because they knew that I did not have that with them. I had a connection. Right? But it wasn't the same connection. Mm -hmm. So they watching her. I ain't, I ain't get nobody no job when they came home. I ain't help nobody get no bands. I wasn't mm -hmm. doing that. So people seeing this and they really looking at her and they jealous. And I'm not a her dude, but at the end of the day, I was her, her big sister. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, my little sister, when she come home, this is what we doing. So what she not seeing, definitely did. What she not seeing is you got people who like young. Why Miller ain't feel like that for me? They vibing for the situation and they don't got it. So now they went to believe. Now, and they went certain parts to me too, because they in my ear talking, talking, talking. And it, it just, it just was bad, man. It was toxicity at its highest level. And you know what really set the breakdown off? This was the this was the breaking point where I had a party and I I got up and um I was performing. It's like my first time performing in a long time. And it was about like, it was about, I was coming out of the halfway house, but I was also doing my music and celebrating Pink Panther Click. And I got up there and I did my performance. And when I thanked everybody and I walked off and I never thanked the Pink Panther Click, right? So Jamila came and whispered to me like, yo. So I was like, oh, oh, my bad. You know, I just slipped my mind. So I went up there and then I thanked the, the group. And then um, Jamila was like, you know, you can't forget stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. So we had a conversation about it. And she was kind of upset with me about it. So um, somebody had called me and said, yeah, Miller's upset with you. And did this. So I was like, what's she upset for? What's she upset for? So I started going off a little bit, right? Not knowing that Jamila was, or they put Jamila on the call, put on speak, something like that. Mm -hmm. So now it looks like I'm just going off on her behind her back. I was emotional, I was mad, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking I'm having a private conversation mm -hmm. because if among sisters, like I have sisters. I can understand. So you gotta roll that back because she ain't even telling that good. Baby, I it so, was so crazy, right? And I'm on a ride to a whole nother event. And we and my sister, we argue all the time, it's nothing. I wasn't thinking nothing about that. I, I was a little teed off because I'm like, lady, you had a, I didn't even have a come at home party, right? So Aisha had the party. Like, I'm just sticking to the business. Like, after the parties, let's get to the bed, let's figure it out. She had the party, so I'm supporting her party. So really, her party is my party, right? Because I never had a party, but I'm with my sister. So we in a crowd, and we sing it to the songs that she used to get mad, right? Because <laughs> she used to call me Diddy because I went to know all of the videos, right? So I used to do, you know, it's like that and fun in the videos. But I did it more as comical mm -hmm. because I knew that if we played like that, it would get us more attention. Mm -hmm. Aisha felt like, this is my, this is my own. <laughs> You know, we don't play with my art. So she didn't want to let me be the ice of this guy. So I, went to, I was like, Mila, like, relax, relax. Don't relax. <laughs> yeah, nice. So long story short, but it was just all the play. Mm -hmm. When I heard her, uh, you know, yeah, thank you guys. Da -da -da, all that, my kids in the audience that came through, shout out to you all. And she ain't mentioned not one of us. They get the fluid from Detroit, Wolf, Carolina, anywhere. And she got the mic and she doing a thing. You don't say nothing about us. So I'm just standing there like, yo, right? What I could have got over that. I could have got over that. that. That I was upset about. Mm -hmm. So you don't hit up like, hey, y'all. Before she could, you know, she got up the stage. I think y'all, I said, thank y'all. Got people from around the world here who flew in for this. Make sure it does your job. So she got back and she got it right. And she did the right thing. Mm -hmm. I was mad, but that's something I could get over. What I couldn't get over was that phone call. So basically, we was mm -hmm. on our way to one of the girls flew it from another city. And the crazy part is, I'm such a good loading person, I never blew the chick up. But we was on with another chick from another city. And we was in the car and going to another event. And Aisha didn't know she was on the speakerphone. So the girl wasn't even trying to blow Aisha up. 
right? Because she didn't know Aisha was going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So she was like, oh, Aisha, da 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 whatever they were saying. And then Aisha was like, yeah, because Mother's man, you know, but I didn't want her up on the stage doing all of that stuff she be doing. So I didn't call her purposely. That's a good <laughs> For me, I'm imagining here with somebody you're so close with, somebody that you went through, and you're hearing. This ain't like Shanique or Shantae in the poll and me telling me what she said. I wanted to tell my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I was done. That was the that was the breakdown. That I was the breakdown. That, that was the breakdown right there. Take this. 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 this. Take this. Take this. Take this. Take this. Take this. this. Take this. Take this. Take this. Take this. Take this. That's what sisters do. Right. But I'm not thinking you on the phone with no next chick. And even if you felt like that, chick, that shit to yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't disrespect me to know something to the next chick. That another one by hey, providing for the be us. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? I was hurt. That was it. No, so, she was. So and, and that's and finished after that when he was all that's where the breakdown came mm -hmm. in. But prior to me that to that conversation, I started getting calls that day, like, oh. Jamila called me, she pissed off. Jamila, so I'm like, she really still pissed off about that? So by the time I got on that call, that's when I just started. And they all, they know. only, cause guess what? They was all outside with me. After the part, she's still in the party speaking to her fans. Cause you look at this her new fans on Instagram. And Kenny, uh, she at the party speaking to the fans. You know what I mean? <laughs> we outside in the huddle. Folks are like, I'm the one from Detroit. I came for such and such. She ain't mentioned our names one time. So the group. All had something to say about that because everybody felt in some type of way. They didn't say personally. They put it on Jamella. Well, all the calls was about Jamella feels away. Jamella feels away. Jamella feels away. That's the truth, okay? The people we was in, that's how I got the courage to go up to you and say something in the party. Because they was like, somebody needs to say something. Somebody got to say something. So I said, all right. Damn it, I'm going to say something. So I left the cuddle. That was outside, and they was like, yo, she out. And you know, then things like, yeah, yeah, you know, she be coming home, feeling the south. You know, uh, 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 uh. She don't even care. And I don't even move that way. That's crazy. So, this is what was coming to be. I'm like, damn, we're supposed to be on purpose. And she violated the purpose. I gotta go, you know, I gotta go say something. And it wasn't even crazy. Just like, yo, Aisha, that I said something, right? Yeah. And now I'm the bad guy. But then it comes back to me. You know, it's like, oh, Jamila, you know, so it was just a lot of, and then I'm dealing with backlash at home, right? Because I have sisters. So after I got up and did the correction, like, and shout out my Pink Panther Click sisters, my biological sisters was mad. They like, oh, you only care about your prison sisters. You didn't shout out your sister. We've been here your whole bit. So it was just a lot. And that's so why. That was also another point. Mm -hmm. Then this thing came to that's, that's why I said, from my own experience. and sisters. Mm -hmm. They was all in their feelings about the relationship that I have with Aisha mm -hmm. because it was all this close stuff happening. They people was home and they wanted to understand what's this. What in, so it was crazy. But when people wait 10 years for you and you have so many people to love them and, I, and, and I, it's hard to spread yourself thin I, kids. I get it, so I you don't know? fault you for that. But like, I don't understand it. My best friend, Tapia, she fell in love. Tell you at the 800 fight, cause all she came through. I'm like, yo, this my sis, Aisha. Yo, sign for the call. She like, yo, I'm signing for the call. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is what we doing. Mm -hmm. But the people on the other end, they not doing that. Mm -hmm. You feel really? me? Right. It's hate. It's yo, Miller trying to be more than you. She trying to, all Miller trying to do is make sure we all eat. Cause that's what I've proven to do time and time again. I'm my own individual. They the own individual. Right. But the long story short, because we need to wrap this one up, because baby, I don't really operate that I mean, I'll uh, hear on it. I, 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 I don't <laughs> completely here for real. I, I think so, for the first time on I Love Me More, period, we, we, we have arrived at a point where this is raw. People are going through yeah. it. This is traumatic, and it's a lot of unhealed, unresolved feelings, emotions, communication. But it's still so. It's still love. No, no, it's not. Absolutely. Love. It's still love. But, but I, I guess the question would be, where do you go from here? What is this first step? Of and it's sad love? because we put out Pink Panther Click One, and everybody wants to. Now everybody want to be up here. And it's, it's, already it's already written. It's already done. Okay. But we haven't been able to come together as a group to be able to do that. And it's sad because I'm honestly, we was like the biggest things like. Mm -hmm. People was waiting for, and you know for what we had going on. Been, I mean, I I feel like the I high part is going to jam. You ain't catch that one. <laughs> I've been the whole lot. 
Because I've been all this shit on up. You know what I'm Okay. Because I said, I'm trying to get this out. Oh, hold on, my lady. I'm doing it for y'all leaving me. We do doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm not cooperating in anything anymore. Mm-hmm. You want to leave, go leave with the person who's taking you to the promised land. Let them get you in quick. And I've just been on my old day. But I think it was the best thing because Aisha has been able to now really focus and work on her career, get her stuff going. And everybody's finding themselves. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to go through their process of healing. Mm-hmm. And we still, I don't know, have it fully healed, but today is a big step. Mm-hmm. It's not even just a step behind the seat. Maybe it's a step for me. Mm-hmm. You know what it makes me know? I still got some more work. Because if I was completely healed, I wouldn't be this emotional right now. So it's sweet. Well, this is the first, this is this is years and years of holding in and you know, years of not being able to speak your piece, people wondering, people posting. They seen us all together. Now you see people not in the post. We start, we just, you know, it was like, what's happening? So nobody. So what I can respect on both sides, I never put dirt on them. And to what I could see, to the most part, I didn't get dirt put back on me. So I, mean, I just left it. I just said I can't do this no more. So people on the internet were so disappointed. So, so disappointed. Come up to us places like, oh my God, what happened to the people? But they ain't been through what we've been through. So at the end of the day, people can say, oh, they have not been through that trauma. I don't care what we talk about right now. Nothing is bigger than that trauma that we went through while we were in prison. Away, she was away from her kids. I was away from my family. People were away from, you know, and it's crazy because me, Shawana, and Gia met up in Vegas. And we were sitting at the pool and I was and uh, I met Shawana and Gia at MDC before I went to West Virginia. And I remember Gia was pregnant. I mean, not pregnant. She had just had a baby. So she still had breast milk and her breast would like leak. And she'd be like, oh, my God, my baby's hungry, you know. And I remember how traumatizing that was. And we sat at the pool in Vegas and me, Shawana and Gia cried. Just sat there and cried, talking. And this is years ago. And we just sat there and cried about something that happened so long ago. And we were just talking about the trauma of that and how hurtful it was and how this system, you know, yeah, we take individual responsibility. But at the end of the day, that system, in a way, it pit everybody against each other. Because now you're making me have to restart my life. I have to think about these women have to think about myself. I have to think about my family. I shouldn't have been pulled from them in the first place, not for that amount of time. So at the end of the day, that's what allows me to move forward and not be all the way held back by that because I have to remember who the source of the pain is. And it's this system. You know um, You know what happened with me recently with, 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 with men, with my guy? You know, it's the system. It's not, we are the only people in America who have to literally plan, especially if you're with a black man or with a black woman, that they might get snatched from you. And then you gotta hold it down. You can't live your life. I've been going for 10 years. Now, you know, my dude is locked up. I gotta hold that down. My life is constantly stagnated by the system. So now let's say he comes home and we start arguing about something. It's gonna be an unnatural argument because if he never got taken away in the first place, we might not even be having this conversation. So it goes the same in personal relationships, romantic relationships, friendships. The prison is the real devil. And I try to remember that and you know, maybe one day, maybe we all come together for a reunion and everybody will be a little bit more healed and we can show the world how. Look, look at my how? Face. Because there's already a stigma I'm not against. There for that part I know you're not there yet, but I'm speaking in the future. Right. But I'm not there yet. Say, <laughs> that gotta be responsible for their own trauma. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's what this show is about dealing what? with your own trauma. I said I'm not there yet, but I'm still dealing with my trauma and going through it. But what I had to put up, y'all, is something called boundaries, which we talk about in the book. This was a toxic relationship because we was in a relationship with all these people and folks who didn't have the same love and affection. So I had to place boundaries around But Miller, I'm going to tell you, what? this is something that I always wanted to talk to her about, right? She is a lover. Her love language is giving and caring. But that ain't everybody's love language. Some people's love language is just receiving. You know what I mean? So Jamila, as a lover and a caretaker and a giver, you know, she has to learn, and if she hasn't learned already, that being that way is a sacrificial lifestyle. and You're not always going to get it back. You're not always going to get it reciprocated. And that's something that it's hard to deal with, but it's something that you have to embrace as you're being you. Because, but guess what? I'm not embracing that. Because guess what? 
I'm giving to people who give back to me. Maybe everything got to be mutual. So that with this situation, <laughs> told me we gonna do this thing mutual. But you don't know. No, you don't know. It's a risk. Yeah. That's okay. It ain't no yeah. risk. Cause guess what? I'm giving mugs up front. <laughs> for now, if you a little bit, I'm waiting for you to give me a little bit back. Then I'm gonna give you a little bit more. Then you won't give me. So I gotta do a different kind of dance. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. Healthy relationships mm-hmm. look like reciprocal. Mm-hmm. Once you start seeing it, 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 it ain't right. It ain't evil. We're not doing that no more. So now I'm attracting people who are givers. I don't got these takers in my life no more because I'm not attracting that. Mm-hmm. As soon as I see you, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting right away from you because you ain't right because I recognize me. So I feel like in this world, it's okay to be a good friend, but you got to be a good friend to people who are deserving mm-hmm. of your friendship. I believe you was just, and I don't have no regrets. At the view, I don't got no regrets. If I could do it again, I would. Give it again, I would, because I don't think that there was anything there. But I do feel like some of them people, if I had to do it again, I would not. <laughs> okay? Let's get the cup knocked out. Okay? Because that's the other thing. When you give the things to people that they're not supposed to have, the, the universe has a way of making sure it messes up because they're supposed to get it on their own. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to You're not supposed to be a part of them. So it was my codependent behavior, because mm-hmm. that's what you're talking about. Codependency is when you're looking for the emotions and esteem of others. You know, when you're looking for people to love you based on what, that's my shit. Mm-hmm. So I went back to the stuff I was doing with dudes and I did it with females mm-hmm. and I ended up getting hurt because that wasn't what I was supposed to do. So the blessing in disguise is that <laughs> another level. But Miller, hold on, the level up for me was I wasn't called to a click. And I had to realize and respect that. So I'm not called to a particular anything. I'm called to my people. Mm-hmm. And I had to get that too because it was like I was using prostitute in my anointing for what I think it needs to be for instead of what God wants it to be for. So I feel like everything happened for a reason mm-hmm. and I learned from it. And I feel like everybody, I don't feel like I owe anybody anything because folks got what they needed to get. And what I got was my wings to... S- to walk alone, because sometimes you got to do that every time. Well, hold on, Miller. Let's talk about this. Yes. About us women. Yes. Because a lot of times, and I, I'm not saying it's you specifically, yes. but in general, we will get done so dirty by like a guy, something, That's true. and we forgive them, or we get back with them. We haven't make up sex before the night is over, and they didn't did the worst. But when it comes to other females, mm-hmm. a lot of times, sometimes we don't always have that same patience. And I feel like if you gonna be a forgiving person. It needs to be across the board, especially if somebody's genuine. Now, if they ain't genuine, or they trying to bring you harm and you let it go. Well, but if I somebody kind of, because when them dudes come and do that, I'm, I'm done with them now. No, 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 I'm not so talking about you. The policy is everybody can get it. No, I can have it. That's what it is. Well, that's a bigger lesson for everybody. Men, get them kids, can get it too. <laughs> if you ain't right. <laughs> I can't do that. Now, can I say something? Can I say okay. something about this girl right here, right? So she comes home, right? So, you know, everybody want a little prison cootie cat because it didn't be locked up. No, I didn't know. Everybody want to get a piece of it because it's like, you know, you, they call it a prison virgin, right? Got it. She's gone for a decade. Everybody want. So this girl right here is like, hey, ain't nobody getting this. <laughs> and it's crazy because she was sticking to it. And I'm like, girl, she was like, they got to come correct. They got to come. They got to want a future. They got to want. And I'm just looking at her like, she really? So what's she saying? Mm-hmm. But you know what she's not talking about? You know, my relapse cake, that toxic relationship <laughs> uh-huh. that I was in yeah. when I was at the Shawnee Baraka Center. Uh-huh. The only reason I even, that person even had a chance to get in because I was grieving for no. them. Oh, wow. I was grieving for them. Mm. So I let somebody in to try to ease the pain. It came and told me on a poop. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, we got to pay all oh, things God. around here. Okay, because the bills got to pay, be paid. Aisha, I love you. This is I love you too. But and that's why I wanted to bring up that phone call. Cause it's important. That was that was wrong. And it's yeah. important for you to take responsibility. Yeah. You know, when you have low moments or you have emotional reactions. In that moment, it was like, I didn't think that deep about it. Mm-hmm. But the damage that it caused was so severe. And it's like, I, I apologize to her personally, but I apologize publicly because that that was that wasn't nice. You know what I mean? And it was irresponsible. And it yeah, no, I'm it, about it, to cry cause no, damn because no, because it damaged a very good friendship. Mm. And she really loved me so much. I still love you. Baby. No, I know, but so when you, it was just like someone 
you never stop loving them. Because if you're able to stop loving, that means love wasn't really love at all. Right, right. So, friend, I love you. Oh. I love you too, girl. I want to get in this. <laughs> what the hell? Never going to stop loving you. Yes. Now, what I will do is work towards us really healing our friendship. Because I ain't been right. I know I ain't been right. <laughs> and I ain't been right because I haven't been healed. So fully from it. It was a gangster. I mean, she doing all of this. I know Miller. So we was in the trenches together in prison. And you are helping me through some of my darkest girl right here. So she, 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 the life of she again. So I can't never <laughs> how what you did either. Right. Cause like I said, I came to a new place. It could have been crazy. Mm-hmm. It take you two, three, four, five years to get positions in prison. I got that through our overnight. Right. So I'm never going to take that away. She was there when I need out the most. I just still have to do a little bit more work. That's okay. Can I get back in my book? We're going to get in that book tonight, but it was work with that thing. What is this good? The world understands now what happened. It was transparent, mm. you know, and I think that um, I always got hope for healing. I got hope for the Pink Panther to come back. I have hope. 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 You know, for us, <laughs> that we get healed, you know, and I, I love you. I still love them. I don't have any beef with any individuals because I know it was the spirit behind that. But again, like I said, where I'm going, I can't. The reason why I really separate myself and put up those boundaries because I know I can't take the pain. Mm-hmm. You know when you love so hard and you can't take that pain. So my boundary was my protection not to deal with that no more. Because I know if a person could stab me once so cold, oh man, what could they get? Like you said, you always got it right. You always came back. You always did that. I remember they would do stuff like it's my birthday. Y'all, we know nobody post up for a birthday. Oh no, like, I post. Crazy stuff. Just crazy stuff. It was crazy. And that stuff hurt me. But I took my power back from it. I was like, mm, you're not going to be able to do this no more. And that was my way of dealing with it. So anyway, y'all, we got to pay these bills. Ooh. You gotta pay these bills. I gotta, I got a nice gift for you. You understand me? I got that. I love me more. Oh, all right. And understand, even out of the pain, something purposeful came out of it because it's this work that we do right here. And y'all stay tuned. We got a word from our sponsor. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and I got a special offer for you, right? It's my gift. From me to you. You want to level up? You want to manifest the life of your dreams? Well, I'm going to give you a piece of the plan, right? It starts with my manifested now vision plan. So follow me. It's actually the template that I use each and every year to get into my goals, my dreams. And unlike a vision board, I actually put this document on paper with goals and dreams and plans of who I want to be and what I want to become. And now you could do it too. It's time to level up, y'all. It's time to be the best you that you can possibly be. And I'm going to give you the plan. And best of all, I'm going to give it to you for free. Click the link right here. Download today and level up. Make sure you share the results with me. This is the exact plan that I've been doing for the last four years and each and every year is taking me higher and higher and I pray it does the same for you. All right, y'all, welcome back to the I Love Me More lightning round. Um, so Aisha, you got you have to part- participate in the lightning round. So the lightning round is I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. You have a few seconds to answer them. Okay. If you're in a car and you got a gun in the car, please pull you over. Who you call one? Wanna. <laughs> That's our best friend. Mm-hmm. Best friend. Um, three words to describe a toxic relationship. Negative. Setbackish. <laughs> Sad. Three words to describe a healthy relationship. Beautiful, inspiring, motivating. All right. And what movie makes you cry? What was that movie? Tiana Taylor, the movie she just. Oh God, that made me cry too. That's crazy. that made me cry. Um, one in one in one in one in ten thousand. What was it called? I can't remember the name of it. What thousand and one? Thousand and one made me cry. All right, I had to get up out the OB theater for buy that one. That, that's real. That's crazy. So I, I wanted to know. <laughs> y'all don't cry. I wanted to see. That brings to you see your eyes. Oh, thank you for participating. Thank Absolutely. you for being here today. Absolutely. Thank both of you. Think well. The fact that both of you are being so transparent. 
you went through this series of emotions. I really hope that, especially in the all that we're doing, that you know, in the healing, it also brings you guys back together. Okay. And you know, anyway, I love her, and I want to see my friend win. One of the things she writes like nobody's business. I always, always, always saw her writing feature films, right, and doing all the stuff that she still hasn't necessarily done that I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm that, I'm that, and. If I got it or I got a platform, I got something that can help you, friend, you got that. Oh, thank you so much. She said, I mean, that's that's classic Miller. You know what I mean? She's just always been a giver, a helper. And the same goes for me. If I have something, yeah. you know, um, I would definitely help her if, if possible. I mean, Miller, she already, you know, man, you know Miller. She, she's a she's but to a, help is just just genuine love. Sometimes that's all, all I need. So Aisha. So for people who want to check you out or follow you, t- tell us where we can reach. Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram at the real Aisha Hall. If you want my books, you can go to Amazon, get my books. You want to see my interviews, go to YouTube. And also, if you go to the local shop right, please pick up Lyrical Chef Banana Pudding. We are in 120 different shop rights. And that is uh, one of my products. Shout out to Lyrical Chef. Grab you some banana pudding and show some love. That's right, your music. Oh, yeah, my music. Oh, shout out to Ghostface Killer. Yes. Yes, I'm Ghostface Killer's artist on Yap City. Shout out to um, everybody who's just been supporting me with my music. Go to Apple. Go to any music platform. Get the Aisha Hall. I'm about to drop this new album, and it's definitely going to be going all the way what? That. <laughs> and Pops and Dory, make sure you check out Trap Queen series. She's on that as well. And my true crime story. Uh-huh. The new season hasn't aired yet, but I'll be uh, on the upcoming season. All right, y'all. Like, another wild emotionally wild episode of I Love Me More podcast. Please make sure that you join our community. Our community is. It's a space and a place where you can come unite and heal, where we could talk about these conversations, but we have to bring you in the community to put this up because I know our studio audience got some questions for the both of us. Mm -hmm. So it's a place that we could do that, a place that we could share resources, tools, information, just different things where you can just better yourself. self improvement tools. It got per- our book, right? I love more is it's, it's a book. It's mm. a transformational tool that has group work. It has a course. It's a bunch of stuff. So head over now to www.blackwomenslivesmatter.com or click the link right now in the bio. And y'all already know what it is. It's going with Dale, baby. Until next time on the next episode of I Love Me More podcast. She's the mother of one of our students, but unfortunately, My student, Robin, she's no longer here with us. Give it up for Janine Pierre, y'all. Robin was remarkable. A straight-A student. Robin had friends all over. We would say, Robin, why do you want to be friends with this person? That person doesn't look like it. Mom, you got to give everybody a chance. She introduced Robin to this young man, and from there, Robin's life was never the same. So you see your daughter with this young man that's pulling out a gun on the family. This boy had some issues. She was found dead in his house, shot in the head. Six months, three medical examiners. He's like, we got the, you know, autopsy. I'm looking at this man, he's not giving me any eye contact. Oh, it, it was a suicide. No, it wasn't.